Guys, how you doing? Welcome to Good Works Tractors. Today, we are gonna take a look at the biggest changes on the 2021 Ford Super Duty Series. Mostly good changes, maybe a few bad, some hidden ones as well as my favorites. So stick around. Hey, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up right down below on this video and hit that subscribe button if you like truck videos, trailer videos, and tractor videos. I'd love to have you tag along. I happen to love this change right here and I didn't even know about it. Neither did the dealer until uh, they took delivery of my trade-in and the new truck and had them sitting side by side. But this truck bed, the, the bed rail here itself is actually about two inches lower than the older version, both my 2018 and 2017 Super Duties, which for me, I'm six foot three. I should be able to lean over a bed rail comfortably and get in and out what I need to. However, it was getting to the point of those older trucks, the 2018 in particular was a real pain where I had to just reach way over and I could barely get down here to the bed. Now keep in mind the overall height of the truck does not change. It still barely fits, but does fit inside a standard height garage here. I have a little bit over 82 inches of actual clear space. It's a nominal seven foot high garage, but it's gonna hit the weather stripping. I can hear it when it hits the weather stripping going in and out, but doesn't actually hit the frame. It's so close that before I bought my first Super Duty and back in 2017, I made sure even though the dealer said it was gonna fit no problem, that I did a test drive back here for a fit check on my garage. It was that close. Now I know we all love our power and the 2021 Power Stroke didn't disappoint in that category. You have 475 horsepower driving 1,050 foot-pounds of torque. I know the big three are always competing for the biggest and baddest power plant they can put under the hood. However, at this point, you really don't need to go any bigger or more powerful for the size of the truck. I can haul whatever I need to in a 250 or a 350. Keep that in mind. It's the same power stroke engine that's gonna go in the F250, the F350, the same amount of torque either way as well. One of the great changes I love on the 2021 over my 2018 and 2017 are gonna be it now has a 10-speed transmission over the six-speed on the older generation. I've noticed a couple things with this change. Number one, it's gonna accelerate a lot more smoothly. Even the delay when you press the gas pedal from the takeoff, there's just not a lapse or a gap that's in there between the response time from when you push the pedal. So it's a big difference. I don't know if that's related to anything to do with the gearing and the ratios, but that's gonna be one significant improvement along with the smoother upshift or downshift of the transmission. So naturally, a couple of my buddies pointed out, a couple of people online as well, that if you have a 10 speed transmission, shouldn't you naturally get a little bit better fuel mileage? Well, I haven't noticed anything just yet. I am still in the break-in period, so I hope it improves a little bit, but at this point, I would say I'm getting worse mileage than I was before. And if you head on over to fuelly.com, there's a lot of user input on there for entering your fuel mileage that you're getting for a Ford Super Duty or any vehicle that's out there, car, truck, SUV. But you'll notice over the years with the Ford Super Duty, the mileage actually from real users goes down and down and down. It is not improving, it is going the wrong direction. A really cool feature that my wife's Expedition has, my older 2018 and 2017 Super Duties did not have this, but it's the Ford Pass app that you can have for your phone. You can do a lot of really cool things with this. You can lock and unlock your vehicle. You can actually remote start it from anywhere in the world if you wanted to. It's gonna have vehicle information, your fuel level, your air pressure, if there's recalls, all sorts of information that's right here in this app just at the touch of a fingertip. So the difference between the app and the key is the fact that the key is only gonna work within a very specific range to unlock or lock, as well as uh, remote start your vehicle. However, with the app, anywhere in the world you have a cell signal, you can unlock or lock or remote start your vehicle. I do wanna mention, it is really hard to get a straight answer out of dealers for all the various trim packages that are out there. It's tough to know what's standard versus what is included in a certain package when you're uh, building a truck new. If you're looking for a truck in the used world, see if you can get a build sheet out of it. I do look a lot of the times for visual clues like what you see here, these couple of arrows mean that it's gonna have adaptive steering. Up above the entertainment console, you'll have six different buttons. If you have all six of those, it means you're gonna have all the different features that you can possibly get even the different kind of outlets that you could have on the back console for the rear seat if your kids are gonna be uh, riding along back there as well. So if you've got something helpful to share with other folks, maybe your favorite feature, something you wish you had, something that is a complete waste of time and a waste of space, leave a comment down below. The trailer backup feature that came on this truck was something I probably didn't really need. However, it's been on the F-150 series for several years now at least. They've now migrated over to the Super Duty series as well. I'm not sure what year the cut-in was. I haven't used it yet, 
from my understanding, you need to take some dimensions, physical dimensions, maybe put some stickers on your trailer if you want to have it hooked up and, and kind of um, integrated with this entire system for your truck. But basically it allows you, once you put it into that trailer backup mode, engage it, select a trailer that's hooked up, and then kind of steer as you're backing up just with this little knob. If you've used a trailer long enough, you just know how to back it up anyways. I don't think I'll ever actually use that feature. I feel like it's just going to be more of an inconvenience than a convenience. However, if you don't use a trailer too much, I can see that feature being very handy as long as you take the time to go through the proper setup. One of the great changes that I love on the touchscreen entertainment console up here is the fact that they now integrated all your presets into just a scrolling menu. What I love about the scrolling presets is you can have one screen, two, three, four, or up to five screens of six presets on each screen. So get all your country stations, your news channels, your sports channels, your wife's channels, your kids' channels. You can have space for all of those on here, both XM channels and FM channels as well. It's a totally different and much more convenient setup from the 2017, 2018, where you only had three screens to choose from and they weren't scrolling. You had to click a button on your touch screen to go from one set to another set and then maybe go all the way through the FM, AM, CD, everything else to get right back to those serious XM presets again. A lot more convenient this way. Another technology improvement that's kind of a hit and a miss in my opinion is going to be the wireless charging pad for your cell phone. So it's very nice to have a location to be able to just wirelessly charge your phone. However, I feel like Ford could have picked a better location, perhaps somewhere up here on the dash in the tray, uh, maybe a little cutout pocket right here in the middle, or somewhere more convenient because tucked down inside one of these cubbies, kind of in an awkward location to get your hand in and out of and not have any idea what you're trying to look at if you do get a notification is somewhat of a driving hazard in my opinion. I feel like they could have done a lot better. Now all that said, you can pretty much do whatever you need to with your phone right from the steering wheel here. You're going to have the ability to have Apple Play or Android Play. You can call and hang up on people. You can do uh, voice commands as well. So if you sync your phone book that's in here and say, you know, call wife or call son or whatever you want to put in there, you can do everything without having to take your eyes off the road and your hands off the steering wheel. According to the dealer, I was told LED lights are now standard on Lariat, Lariat, I know you guys roasted me a long time ago on how I pronounce that, but the Lariat package, the King Ranch, the Platinum, and the Limited. My 2017 Lariat had the halogens, which I absolutely hate. I actually just bought bulbs finally after all these years to make that conversion. You know, the OEM headlights, if you want to buy these, are so expensive, so I found an aftermarket solution to get those from. But I'm telling you, the LED headlights and the fog lights that are on here are a night and day difference. They're so nice and bright. I know some of you guys hate them when you're staring into them coming this way, but maybe it's all these years staring at a computer screen, but I tell you, I can see so much better at night with the clarity that these LED lights provide. This antimatter blue metallic color is amazing. So it was one of those things I had to take a bit of a risk on. They said it was going to change from the 2020 version, and it definitely did. In certain lighting conditions, it looks almost black. I didn't want a black vehicle. However, when the sun hits it just right, you know, in, in different times of the day, it just really changes color. But it looks, for me, it's the, exactly what I wanted. If I were going to pick a shade of blue, this was the shade of blue I would have gone with. I'm very happy with it. I don't like the fact that I kind of had to gamble on knowing exactly what shade it was going to be before I ordered the truck. However, everything turned out pretty well. I got to share some of my favorite features about the Ford Super Duty as well. First one is all the storage that there is available. You can actually, you can store your hunting rifles and shotguns down underneath here. This also locks to have nice, safe storage. Going to a restaurant, gas station, whatever else, you can lock it in here and not have to worry about it. So my very first Super Duty, I lucked into having this feature. My 2018 that I bought used, I made sure it was on the must-have list. And when I ordered my 2021, you can sure bet that this lockable storage in the middle console was on my must-have list of features. I got to admit, this hidden feature was hidden to me for years, even though the 2017 had it, the 2018 had it, and of course the 2021 has it, and that is going to be the front camera washer. So there's a way to enable that, I just never really even realized it. So I finally watched a video, realized that I've always had this feature on all of mine. As much as I love it on the front, I'm telling you, I could use it probably even more so on the rear camera. I wish they would find a way to integrate that. 
Now, as ridiculous as this sounds, one of the features that sold me on my first Super Duty was the entire redesigned interior. I just felt like for the money, they weren't up to snuff with the other competition that was on the market. But checking out that fresh design in 2017 changed my entire opinion. In particular, this panoramic sunroof or moonroof, whatever it is. It's just absolutely amazing. I love the feel of the wide open feel that it gives you you know where i'm six foot three i often feel cramped inside vehicles and i just for some reason get a real feel of space in here that like i'm not cramped in i have more space than i need the view from the back seat is great as well and i do want to mention whether you're in the front or the back you can fit four men my size in here for a long hunting trip out west and all the way back very comfortably I do want to take a quick second and just talk about these additional tie downs right here that Ford offers. These have always just come in an accessory package. You just take them out of the package, install them in five minutes or less, but a very nice additional tie down location besides the typical little D rings you have in, in each corner, something up a little bit higher, a little bit more in the middle where you can just get additional securement points for all the odds and ends that you're carrying in your truck bed. And maybe it's just the laziness in me coming out, but I love the fact that I don't have to take the key out of my pocket at any point to get into my vehicle or start it and get on the go. To unlock, all I simply do is just touch the inside. I do have to have the key close by. If I don't have the key on me, you're not gonna be able to do that. To lock it, hit the black button. Once I'm inside, put my foot on the brake, push the start button, and I'm off to the races. I wanna leave you with a fun one, my favorite party trick, making the windows go down without ever touching the truck. Wait for it. There they go. Now, unfortunately, you can't make them go back up. You got to download the Forescan app or program, get it on your computer. You can customize all sorts of settings. I have yet to do that, but all sorts of folks mentioned it and all the great things you can do. Apparently, it's free. I got to look into it further myself. Well, that's not a all-inclusive list. By any stretch of the imagination, I'm not a Ford dealer, just a guy who has some super duties on hand. So hopefully you found this entertaining. If you know of other changes, favorite features, hidden features, things you hate, leave a comment down below. Maybe we can help each other out. I'd appreciate you taking the time to give me a thumbs up right down below. That'll really help the video out. Hit that subscribe button if you want to see occasional truck videos, trailer videos, and a lot of tractor videos. Thanks so much for taking the time to stop by. Until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.